Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Adam. Thank you for tuning in. Today we are talking about Metroid on the Nintendo Entertainment System. No! 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 I knew when that Metroid was on my head that, uh, you know, I was perfect for the role, and it just really made me appreciate life a lot more. Welcome to Metro All right, so we're talking about the entire Metroid series. We're gonna do a little bit of a rapid review, similar to my Zelda video. But today, let's start with the first one here, Metroid on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I believe the first Metroid that I played you know what, I think I did play this Metroid first on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but it wasn't like, although I don't remember it being as significant to me at the time until later. Like, I'd say the first Metroid for me that was quite a big deal was the Game Boy Metroid, the second one. But before we get to that, let's rate the first Metroid. Uh, it is a very, it's still a really great game. Um, large world to explore. Uh, it's pretty easy to get lost actually on that world map because a lot of areas look very similar. Um, and there's a bunch of like nooks and crannies that are kind of cryptic to get to. But it was a really, really good game for the time. Having, being able to go back and forth and up and down and just explore all over the place was quite significant for the time. And it does have a really cool story where you know you get these upgrades and you fight Kraid and, and Ridley and get to the mother brain. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool. That last boss fight was pretty intense uh, when you're fighting the mother brain and then you gotta escape at the end with the countdown timer. And then at the end, if you beat it fast enough, you know, Samus uh, shows herself in her suit, which is pretty incredible for the time. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised by that because everyone thought Samus was a, a guy. A lot of people would call her Metroid as well. They thought the character was Metroid, but. So that was a pretty cool surprise at the end of the game, then when you found out she was a girl. But yeah, I, I would give the first Metroid, uh, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Um, still a really great game, just the the sequels are much better in my opinion. Um, so then let's go to Metroid 2, which was on the Game Boy. I remember picking it up at my local game store. We had, I, I, we must have had a Game Boy for a little bit of time, because I do remember picking up that game. We must have had the Game Boy maybe for about a year or something. And then, because I remember playing like Battletoads and stuff on it as well. Oh yeah, Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, uh, Super Mario Land, and then another game. Oh yeah, I believe we played like uh, Contra and Mega Man and Ninja Turtles on there. And then I remember playing Metroid 2, The Return of Samus, um, which was an awesome game. I love that the concept of that game because you kind of you, you go on the home planet of the Metroids and then you, you exterminate them essentially. So there's a little countdown timer or a little there's a little indicator of how many Metroids are left as you go through the game and you got to exterminate them all. And that one had a really cool boss at the end as well. Um, and then at the end, there's one more Metroid and you end up sparing the life of that one and it follows you around kind of like a like a baby Metroid and then it, Samus uh, keeps the baby Metroid on the ship. So that game, I really like that game actually. Um, I would give that one probably an 8 out of 10. Um, so Metroid Return of Samus on the Game Boy, 8 out of 10. And then we move on to which I think is probably the best game in the series, uh, Super Metroid. When I played this on the Super Nintendo, it just completely blew me away. Uh, the music, the graphics, the sound design, the atmosphere, how you feel alone on the planet. Um, I forget what the planet name is, SR3XX8 or something. And that game just took the Metroid formula and just blew it up to unreal expectations like it was just unbelievable how what they were able to create with that game and even to this day it's still mind-blowing some of the best music i've ever heard in a video game some of the best atmosphere um so super metroid also has one of the coolest last boss fights i've ever seen in a game just that dramatic epic music when you're facing mother brain is just there's no words to describe it. Um, so Super Metroid, I would give... Super Metroid is a 10 out of 10, for sure, for sure. 
And then we move on to, I've got my list here, I'm just, hopefully I didn't miss any. Then we move on to Metroid Fusion, which was on the Game Boy Advance. I really enjoyed this game too, actually. Uh, at first I was kind of disappointed that the whole game took place on a ship. So like you go to a ship and then there's like little zones throughout the ship with different um, themes. So like there'd be like a forest stage or like a jungle and then a ice area. And then there'd be like a, you know, a desert zone. Um, I was disappointed that it took place on a ship and not on an actual planet. That one definitely grew on me over time. Like when I played it again later on, I, I really started to enjoy it more for what it was. Um, it did have a, real, a bunch of really cool concepts and the story was starting to get more flushed out. Metroid Fusion. I liked also in Fusion that like you become fused with a Metroid so that some of the, you get some of the abilities to, so like there's a parasite on the ship that can mimic other creatures and then the Metroid is the predator of that creature and they're called X or something. And then when you fuse with the Metroid, you become the predator of those X creatures and you can suck them into your suit as for like HP and missiles and things like that. Which I think was a really cool concept. But you also take the Metroid weaknesses as well, so you're, you're weak to cold. Um, so that's something you have to avoid throughout the game. Metroid Fusion, though, I would give it a 9 out of 10. I really, really liked Metroid Fusion, actually. I thought they did a really great job with that. And then they Fusion and Metroid Prime came out around the same time. Metroid Prime was for GameCube. I also had that one. And this was like where it jumped from side-scrolling to first-person, a shooter, like our first-person view. And... I was skeptical at first. I was worried. I wasn't sure if they were going to be able to pull it off. But Retro Studios, they did a really great job. Um, they pulled off the music, the atmosphere. It was like the first. It was like a first-person adventure game. So you're exploring the big planet. You're going from zone to zone. It's all in first person. A bunch of new uh, abilities and features, like scanning uh, in the area for hints with your visor. Uh, you could switch between your weapons on the fly. You got missiles. Uh, there, the morph ball was super fun to roll around in, in, in 3D, and uh, they had a bunch of cool morph ball abilities like boost ball and stuff. So Metroid Prime was really, really fun too. Uh, oh man, that music, especially the opening sequence in Metroid Prime, it just gives me goosebumps every time. Metroid Prime, I would give... I don't think I'd give it a 10 out of 10, but I'll give it a 9 out of 10. It is a really fun game. I just, I, I do prefer the side-scrolling Metroids more. Um, so I'd give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, then we move on to Metroid Zero Mission, and that was another Game Boy Advance game. So it was a remake of the first game, and the graphics were enhanced, the areas and certain aspects of the game were, were tweaked. I didn't like this one as much as Fusion. I thought Fusion was a better game. They did a good job, like, with the... I like the control of Zero Mission. They did a really good job with the controls. And then near the end, there's kind of like this, like, sneaking area that you have to do where you lose your suit and you got to fight the pirates in, out there at their home base or something. And I didn't really like that part of the game. It just felt kind of like... It, it just turned into another... A, a different kind of game. Metal Gear or something. And it just... It, yeah, I didn't really like that. But the first part was really good, where you're on the planet and... Uh, just going through the game as you normally would uh so metroid zero mission i would give i'd probably give it i'd give it a i'd probably give it a seven out of ten honestly like you know i was thinking maybe eight but seven feels more appropriate it's good it's fun uh, next, we have Metroid Prime Pinball, which was on the Nintendo DS. I did play a little bit of that on my DS. Um, it seemed pretty fun. Um, I don't know if I'd consider it an actual Metroid game, though. It's more of just a spin-off. Uh, it's just a basic pinball game with Metroid formula. Uh, give that one a 7 out of 10, I guess. If you like pinball games, there you go. Metroid Pin Prime Pinball. And then after that, we got Metroid Prime Hunters, which was on the Nintendo DS. And from what I remember this game, it, it was fun. I liked it. Um, there's like different uh, characters that they introduce, like other bounty hunters. And it was basically like they made it for multiplayer, so you could play against your friends in kind of like a first-person arena shooter type game. It was fun. I remember playing it quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, for me, Metroid's always been about the solo adventure of Samus Aran, so... 
the multiplayer aspect just never really interested me. So they're almost turning it into like a Halo or something. But for me, you know, just the atmosphere of just being alone on a planet with Samus Aran and gaining new abilities and checking out new areas and just, you know, that's more Metroid for me. So I give it a I give it a seven out of ten, I guess, for Metroid Prime Hunters. And then Metroid 3 Corruption was for the Wii. So it had the Wii controls, so you could like aim your uh, arm cannon in different directions with the Wii controller. I remember that that game had a lot of grappling hooks, so you'd like hop on railings and then you'd slide down different railings, islands uh, on the railings, and that they really pushed that part of it. From what I remember, I mean, it was a good game. Um, I think they might have introduced like voice acting as well into it, and that was kind of like, eh. Uh, but it was so long ago since I played that game. Um, I do remember I liked Metroid, the first Metroid Prime the most out of the three. Oh, I'm jumping ahead of the game here. I forgot about Metroid Prime 2. So Metroid Prime 2 was the sequel to Metroid Prime. It introduced uh, areas where you could shoot these like small orb things and it'd open up into, you'd go into different dimensions. So like there's parallel versions of the, of the areas. And I remember that game being pretty good, not mind blowing, but that aspect of the game was pretty neat, how you could switch between dimensions. It was very similar to the first one gameplay wise, but other than that, they you know they just introduced a few new concepts. Um, but Metroid Prime Two, I would probably give it a probably a seven out of ten. It wasn't I don't remember it being that significant for me. Um, and then to finish off Metroid Prime Three, Corruption, uh, the Wii Control Wii Control aspect of it was kind of cool, but otherwise. Nothing too significant either. Uh, that one I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10 as well for Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Uh, and then after that, this is where things kind of got weird. We had Bandai, I think it was Bandai Namco, they created, or wait, maybe it was Team Ninja actually. I think it was either Team Ninja or Bandai started working on Metroid Other M. And this game got was very strange. It was, it was like a, it was still the 2D uh, side scrolling, but you could switch to first person by aiming the controller at the screen and then you're shooting monsters in first person, but you could still walk up and down and side to side. Um, so that was really weird. Um, I didn't play through the whole game, but I mean, it was okay from what I remember it being, but there was these like awful cut scenes and the voice acting was terrible. And maybe I'll just play a little clip here, but I awoke to the familiar voice of a quarantine officer. Let's try sitting up, huh? Slowly now. A dream. I had been reliving the tragic moments of my recent past. Thanks to the hyperbeam, which was given to me somehow by the baby. It just was not Metroid for me. It wasn't Metroid. It was... Yeah, they just wasn't the right studio to make that game, to make a Metroid game. So that they just, it didn't work. It didn't work for me. I'd probably give that one a 6 out of 10. It just wasn't, it wasn't Metroid. And then, after years and years and years, we had Metroid 2 Return of Samus, a remake on the 3DS by Mercury Steam. And I played about halfway through that one, and it was enjoyable. I liked it. Uh, the graphics, I didn't like the graphics, though. They were too, like, murky and muddy and it just wasn't a very appeal like the game didn't look good it looked very the polygons and the the 3d it just yeah it just wasn't a very i feel like they could have done better with the graphics just they, they kind of it felt like they kind of dropped the ball there about the look of the game but i mean it was fun i actually enjoyed it's funny actually and there was a remake of Metroid 2, like a fan remake, and I played that one, and I thought actually that was was much better. They used they used the Zero Mission graphics to make Metroid 2: Return of Samus like a fan game. I thought that was actually better than the 3DS remake. Um, so if you get a chance between to play either one of those, I would I would recommend the fan made game. That one seemed better to me. And then finally, we come to Metroid Dread, which came out on the Switch just a few years ago. I think maybe it was about two years ago. 
And that game was awesome. I really, really liked it. Uh, it was the same studio, Mercury Steam. Um, they did a phenomenal job. There's like this robot creature that kind of comes after you on certain sections of the game and you can try and fight it off or you can just avoid it entirely. But that game had awesome graphics. Uh, they did the side scrolling really well. Um, that one felt a lot more like an original Metroid game, kind of like you know the super, like Super Metroid style. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was, I played it all the way through, and I, I really liked it. So uh, I hope they're making another one for Switch Two, which they probably are. So yeah, Metroid Dread. I would give that. I would give that one a nine out of ten for sure. I really really liked it. Um, but uh, yeah, those are all the Metroid games I got on my list here. Um, maybe I'm missing a couple, but let me know in the comments which Metroid is your favorite. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And um, thank you for watching, guys. As always, uh, if you haven't liked or subscribed the video yet, please do so, so that we can reach a wider audience. As always, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.